First off, I, I just wanted to go over um, the agenda for today. So we're at the, the third day of our workshop. Um, I think we've had two fantastic days of, of conversation and, and you know, learning about MedPlus and finding out how other people are using it. Uh, today we are going to have one last um, round of presentations. These are focused on um, uh, verification of ensembles and tropocyclones. Uh, and then um, we'll take a break. And then after that, uh, we will um, come back into this plenary session for about 15 minutes where I'm gonna go over what's in the development pipeline. Um, and then we'll um, break out into um, these breakout groups where uh, you as users get leave to tell the Met Plus team um, what you think uh, we should um, you know, try and, and consider um, for future needs. Uh, it, it will help us with prioritizing um, some of our backlog of development as it is, as well as um, you know, looking for um, ways of funding things by writing proposals to you know, uh, address those needs. So the breakout um, groups, it, they're gonna last for 30 minutes. Um, we're gonna repeat the breakout group a second time um, at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, um, you know, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so that people can can join at least two of the the um, breakout groups to provide their feedback. Um, so once again, those are focused in on cutting edge novel verification techniques, how to um, to evaluate models on unstructured grids, um, you know how to balance the needs between operational um, and research, and and how to facilitate that R two O process. Um, looking at process-oriented and phenomenon-based diagnostics, so you know, really kind of looking more at how to diagnose what's going on in the model, um, and then miscellaneous great ideas. Um, and so um, we'll have that go from 10.30 um, Mountain Time till um, 11.30 Mountain Time with the, the two um, breakout groups. We'll take a, a short 15-minute break to let the um, breakout group leads gather their thoughts and, and you know, figure out what they want to um, report out in, in the future needs. And then this is, I just added this to the, um, the documents. Uh, I realized that we forgot to call out specifically that we will come back into this plenary session for um, the um, future needs breakout group um, report outs. And then we'll just do a final workshop wrap up and see if there's any final Q and A's. And I'm hoping to end this workshop by about 12.30 Mountain Time, 2.30 Eastern Time. Um, and so hopefully uh, that is the, the schedule for the day. Okay, um, and then uh, one other thing I wanted to point out really quick is, um, the workshop, we have now uh, updated the agenda page, um, at least for Monday's um, presentations. If you come to the, the accordion drop down menu, um, and when you come in, you will now be able to um, play the recordings for session one. Um, you know, session two, three, and four are also um, posted up here. So um, the recordings are from the first day are already available. Jenny and Lisa are working furiously on trying to get day two um, posted by later today. And then we will um, have, you know, uh, the remainder of today posted probably by late th this week. Um, so uh, feel free to, to go ahead and, and, you know, refer back to them, share them with your friends and colleagues that were not able to participate in, in the workshop um, and, and so forth. They're, you know, um, served up uh, via YouTube. So hopefully they're fairly accessible to everyone. Any questions um, with regards to the recordings? Yes. Yeah, so Tara, just uh, not specifically to the recordings, I wanted to know about the breakout uh, groups. I, okay. I, I don't have the details, like uh, uh, didn't attend the second half of the, because it was late night here. So regarding the breakout uh, groups, means what is the plan and how they're done? But if there is anything on the Google Drive shared, I just share me the access and I can read about it there. Yeah, so I mean, basically, it's it's just uh, to try and gather ideas from people, um, from participants. Um, so the facilitators will, you know, kind of introduce the topic and then it's it's really a 30 minute brainstorming session as to, um, you know, what uh, the what you as users would like to see. Um, 
a, a the Met Plus team focused on trying to um, you know develop and bring into the, the package. And um, we just tried to um, you know put it into a few different topic areas just to allow people to gravitate towards the topics that they're most interested in. Um, if if it's too late um, in the evening for um, for you, which I, I can completely appreciate. Uh, no, today it is uh, fine. Today it is fine. Okay. Yeah, um, there so. there is uh, in in the um, the Met Plus external drive here. Um, you know where we're sharing everything, including the presentations. I'm putting that in chat. Um, there is a folder for breakout groups, and so we'll be working. Um, from the future needs breakouts. Um, and, you know, we have, um, you know, documents to just kind of um, gather information and, and so forth. So if if you wanted to um, just go ahead and put your ideas into those breakout sessions, and, you know, once again, if you're not able to um, participate because it's you and, and others, I know that India, it's very late <laughs> right now. Um, uh, you know, if you if you would prefer to just put your, your ideas into these, um, these documents, feel free to do that as well. Yeah, okay. sure, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, great, great question. Any other questions? Okay, then just really quickly, why don't we go back and see what's trending. So it looks like uh, there's a lot of desire. Um, there's uh, 29 participants so far that have provided um, feedback on what they'd like to see for advanced training. We have 73 on right now. So we definitely encourage um, more of you to continue filling out this um, survey during the, the next session. Um, but it's um, it looks like Python embedding, um, more um, demonstration of how to use MetCalpy, PlotPy, um, demonstration of um, the ensemble tools, which is appropriate for this session. Um, Demo of Met Viewer, um, climatologies and percentile thresholding, uh, confidence intervals and, and um, statistical significance, and then it starts dropping off a little bit. So, okay, well, that's great. Um, okay, so uh, we're basically at um, the start of our, our session. Uh, I'd like to um, thank uh, John Halley Gatway for um, volunteering to be our, our session chair um, for this, this particular session. Um, I guess, John, do you wanna take it away? Sure, thanks, Tara. Uh, good morning, everybody, or whatever the case may be. Good to see you all, thanks for coming back. As Tara mentioned, the session 10 this morning um, will run from 8.40 to 10 o'clock, where we'll have a break. Um, it consists of five different talks, each 15 minutes in length. Um, the talks are about ensemble verification or tropical cyclone evaluation. And our first speaker, I checked and saw that they were online. So um, apologies in advance if I if I mangle anyone's names, please correct me as I go. Um, the first talk this morning is titled The Operational Implementation of MET Package for Verification of Ensemble Forecast at NCRMWF, which is the National Center for medium range weather forecasting. And this talk is given by Anuma Dubé. Um, I will give you a warning at uh, 13 minutes, uh, letting you know you have, or yeah, letting you know uh, that we're, no, I guess I, I, sh I should warn you at 11 minutes, letting you know you have two minutes left to talk. Um, okay, so, please take it away. Yeah, can you, uh, am I audible? Yes, Hello? I can hear you. Yes, and your, I, okay. I see your presentation. So I can... All right, perfect. So I'll just start. Um, I would just like to apologize from the beginning because I have a really bad throat. Uh, and in case I start coughing, I would like to apologize. So um, the title of my talk today is the operational implementation of my package, uh, particularly for the verification of the trauma forecast at NCMRWF. And I have divided my talk. Uh, talk into these uh, topics. So first of all, I would like to give a very brief introduction about uh, the kind of ensemble prediction systems we have, both local and regional. Then uh, the met tools that we have used, the ensemble stat and the grid stat, the kind of input uh, files that we have for these particular modules. Uh, some results for the verification of rainfall, uh, particularly for the last monsoon season, that is 2021. 
and what are the challenges that we have faced uh, while uh, making these uh, tools operational and the kind of future plans that we have. So uh, the, we have the global uh, internal prediction system that is NEPS-G and the regional one is NEPS-R. Uh, the horizontal resolution for NEPS-G is the kilometers, which is one of the highest resolution ETS in the world. For NEPS-R, it is four kilometers. Uh, the domain, however, for NEPS-R is smaller. It, can, uh, it is uh, given more and it is uh, <coughs> encompassing the Indian region and some neighboring areas also. So the next sheet is 22 uh, member perturb members. This is a 22 perturb members, and it's a lagged in some local system with one control. Whereas the number of members for next R are 11 with 10 perturbations and one control. Uh, 10 day forecast based on the zero and the 12 UTC are generated from next G daily. Whereas from next R, a three day forecast will be from the zero UTC is generated daily. And uh, the NEPSA provides the uh, uh, NEPS uh, G provides the boundary conditions for uh, the uh, the regional model. So uh, the HPC that is present at the NCMRWF is uh, the known as the Mihir HPC. It's a spray XP40 system, uh, and it has a peak performance of 2806 teraflops. Uh, the MET version that is the uh, Currently installed and is used for all the computations is the 10.4 version. There is the MET Plus is the 4.0.0 version. And all the dependencies that are required for running of MET and MET Plus are also uh, present in this, uh, are also installed in the uh, same HPC. So um, looking at the uh, overview of the MET, we have the gridded forecast data and the analysis data, uh, which is used to run the ensemble stat and the grid stat, as well as the series analysis uh, tool. And most of this is done for the verification of the gridded ensemble forecast with the gridded observation. This is a detailed uh, flow chart of what we are following. Uh, at the step one, we have the gridded forecast files obtained from the next, the next R. The original format is the PT format, which is uh, proprietary for uh, the UKMET auction. It is converted to the GRIB2 format using the UM Rider um, capability. And uh, this GRIB2 file is then separated member wise to be used uh, by the ensemble stat. And the gridded observations um, are either MET PDF or in the GRIB2 format, and they are also used by the ensemble stat to generate some statistics like the CRPF. Bank is the plan on the spread scale um, relationship. And all these three are used uh, by uh, for plotting by the in house R codes. Uh, besides this, this also is used to generate the probability fields for the different thresholds that are provided by the user and the ensemble main fields. So the probability fields which are generated uh, are used by further used by grid stats uh, tool for generating the Briar score and its components as reliability, resolution, and uncertainty, the rock curve and the area under the rock curve, reliability diagrams, economic and cost loss value diagrams as well. And all these are again plotted using the R codes, which have been generated in the developed in-house. Um, there are several other um, outputs that are available from both ensemble stat and with stat, but these are the ones that we are uh, currently using for our analysis. So uh, MET, uh, we are using for the verification of several surface variables, like rainfall, the maximum and minimum of two meter temperature, and 10 meter wind. Uh, uh, this is for NEPS G, that is the global, global model. But for NEPS R, we are just uh, verifying the rainfall uh, currently. The observed rainfall that we've used is the IMERS rainfall, which has been accumulated from 3 to 3 UTC. It's in the net PDF format and the resolution, horizontal resolution is 10 kilometers. The forecast rainfall from next G is day one to day 10. Again, accumulated from 3 to 3 UTC. It's a group 2 5 separated member wise and re to uh, 10 kilometers. That is the observed grid. Similarly, for next R, it is day one to day 3 forecast. Uh, again, separated member wise. And it is also re to uh, the observation grid. So this is just a sample uh, configuration file. This, uh, I've just included there to show the kind of uh, thresholds that we've used for rainfall. And they vary from five to 100 millimeters per day. 
and this is the kind of usual distribution or average uh, rainfall that we have uh, during a typical monsoon season over the Indian land region. And these thresholds have been specified for both the forecast as well as the observation. So uh, the grid stat, uh, after the ensemble stat has run, we get the gridded net CDF file, which consists of uh, the probabilities as well as the observation rank. And this is then used to calculate uh, several scores uh, that I have already explained within the uh, flowchart. And this is the configuration file set up for the grid stack in order to obtain uh, the values. So typically, this is a net CDF file, and the various names that we obtain are uh, based on the kind of threshold that we have uh, provided. And these are the observation bins. They range from uh, 0 to 1 with a difference of 0.1. And here uh, we have to specify the uh, threshold for which the analysis is being made. So these are the some sample outputs. The first is a rank histogram. We are comparing the NEPSG versus the NEPSR, and we find that for NEPSG, the global model, slightly coarser resolution, the uh, rank histogram has a typical U shape, uh, whereas for NEPSR, uh, it shows a more uniform distribution of the observation among the members. Uh, this shows a more well formed. Uh, ensemble prediction system, but NFSR is more well formed as compared to uh, NEPSG. Similarly, if we compare the spread uh, versus scales for both the global and the regional models, we see that uh, the uh, RMC and spread are closer together for NPSR, again showing a better uh, spread uh, in case of, uh, or more optimal spread in case of the regional model as compared to the global model. Uh, so CRPS uh, shows the lower values for NEPSG, which is kind of expected because it's a coastal model. So the grid to grid comparison scores will be, uh, are expected to be slightly better as compared to a more finer resolution model. So uh, this, these are the outputs that we've plotted from the ensemble stack. For grid stack, uh, we have plotted the ROC curve and the area under the ROC curve in the following way. So these are for day one to day 10, whereas uh, for NEPSR, we have day one to day three. And uh, the, uh, both the curves are quite comparable, and this is seen in uh, the comparison of the area as well, which in both these cases is greater than, uh, is about 0.8 for day one to day three leaf size. And um, sorry, I forgot to mention that this is for rainfall exceeding the um, 20 millimeter per day threshold. So um, again, for uh, looking at the reliability diagram, we see that uh, for forecasts that have been made with uh, lower probability, that is ranging to 0 0.2, uh, the reliability curve is almost perfect in case of NEPSG, whereas in case of NEPSR, it is showing an over forecasting for all uh, the forecasts. So this is just a trial that we have taken as making a Hilton plot for the comparison of NEPSG with NEPSR. And uh, we see as we have tried to compare the dry score, reliability and resolution as components from the dry score and the area under the uh, rock curve. So we see if we, this is next G minus next R. So the dry score values are lower for the global model as well as the reliability, whereas the resolution is higher and the area under the rock curve is higher. So this just shows that uh, the NPS G is doing a better job in predicting rainfall greater than 20 millimeters per day as compared to the NEPSR uh, model here. Another thing that we notice here is that as uh, the leaf size increases, the uh, difference uh, between the various uh, metrics is becoming smaller. So this is just a trial version and we would like to uh, use the actual scorecard that is available from the next year. So uh, another thing that we have used is a series analysis tool. So this just takes the value of a particular metric uh, for a uh, series, you know, uh, for a time period, and then accumulates it over uh, each grid point and to give a spatial plot. And this is a plot of the dryer score for rainfall exceeding 20 millimeters per day for July 2021. And we have seen that there are some regions, particularly over the west coast of India, over the northeastern parts of uh, India, and over the Arakan coast, which show the higher uh, dryer score values. And these are typically the regions where we have more uncertainty associated with the prediction of rainfall, as it is uh, affected mostly by uh, orography in these regions. And uh, we have usually seen that the model performance in these regions is uh, 
not as good as uh, the, uh, for example, the central part of India. Uh, that is this region. So uh, the challenges or uh, the future plans uh, that we have is first of all, uh, the installation of MET and MET Plus has really been useful for us in terms of obtaining the daily scores as well as the aggregated scores. But most of the aggregation and the plotting that we have done has been done through uh, in-house uh, tools developed in either MATLAB or R, but we would like to make use of the MET CalPy and the MET PlotPy uh, capabilities for uh, generating the statistical aggregation, aggregated, statistically aggregated uh, scores as well as uh, for the plotting. Uh, MET Cure, as one of my colleagues had also pointed out yesterday, uh, we are still, our engineering team is still trying to make it operational. But there are certain um, problems that they will stuck at, but we're hoping to resolve it very soon. And finally, uh, we would like to generate scorecards uh, in order to compare the ensemble prediction systems from various other centers like ECMO, ECMWF, etc. So that's it from my side. Uh, thank you for the attention. Boy, that was excellent timing. Thank you very much for your for your uh, excellent talk. Um, yeah, do we have questions for for her? Marion, please go ahead. Hello, Anamia. Yeah, um, <laughs> really, really nice talk and really great to see how you, you're getting on with, um, you know, uh, the MET Plus with the ensembles. I think we should be um, talking more about, you know, your experiences and the challenges you might have had as we as we go into you know doing more of the ensemble stat um you know at the met office yeah. so yeah it's just a comment but it looks really really good yeah we also have a a, qu a question in the chat from bin bin zhao um he's asking what climatology data sets are used for reference in the upper level field verification is are you using a single climatological mean, or are you also providing a, a standard deviation field to, to define a climatological distribution? Yeah, for now, uh, for the ensemble stat, I have not used uh, any upper level fields. I have just used the uh, uh, surface variables, that is rainfall, two meter temperature, and 10 meter weight. So um, as far as uh, we, we will be doing it in the uh, future, but we're currently, uh, since we're just getting used to the entire process, so we're just doing everything without the climatology for now. Okay, great. Do we have another question for Anumea? I have, I have one for you. Um, I, I don't recall in your your list of uh, future tasks. I, I see that you were running ensemble stat configuring and running the ensemble stat tool directly, and I am wondering yeah. if you see benefit in or 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 have any plans to use the Met Plus wrappers in the future. Do you think that would would make the processing and uh, and setting up new logic easier or or not? Yeah, uh, so uh, for the next G, what we had started was with the Met package, Met 10.0 directly. So that is still running as it is. But for the NEPS R, we have actually used the MET Plus, and I really find it easier because uh, the configuration file is more user friendly. So um, once everything is in place, I would actually extend it to the NEPS G as well. So both MET and MET Plus are working fine with uh, using the ensemble stat and the grid stat for me. Okay, ec excellent. Uh, thanks, thanks again for your wonderful talk. In the interest of time, we're going to move on to the next one. I'll, I'll direct you to the chat. Um, Alicia Bentley from uh, uh, NOAA EMC is requesting that you share links to your verification web pages. And the sure, next absolutely. talk, great, thank you. Um, the next talk this morning is titled uh, Model Evaluation Tools Framework for Tropical Cyclone or TC Verification and NCUM Forecasts. Um, this is given by Mohan Thota also from the NCM RWF. Are you online and available to share your screen? Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, I, I hear your, I see your screen and I you're coming through loud and clear, yeah. so thank you. My voice is audible and the screen, uh, the slides are moving, right? 
Yes, they are. Yeah, Netflix. perfect. Okay. So, I myself, uh, hello everyone. This is uh, Mohan, a scientist at NCMRWF. And today I'm going to talk about uh, the usage of MAT TC package for tropical cyclone verification in NCUM uh, forecast. Uh, here, the um, I would like to say that here the forecast means um, I'm talking about the unified model global deterministic, uh, which is at 12 kilometer resolution. So the outline of my talk is um, the introduction. I will talk about the tropical cyclone, a brief discussion, and then uh, talk about the the tropical cyclone MAT package advantages and what are the tools that we have used for the current work and how the scripts and the workflow we followed and followed by the the objective of our work and then associated preliminary results and our future plans. So uh, basically, TCs are very impressive and destructive weather phenomena, uh, which occurs at almost all ocean basins around the globe, and they are considered as the deadliest and costliest natural disasters um, by IPCC. And uh, these uh, these tropical cyclones, um, nearly it is estimated that nearly about 10 to 17 percent of global rainfall is from the TCs. Um, one unique feature of these uh, TCs is that TC forecasts and observations are quite different from the other numerical or graded forecasts or from the operational models. So, luckily, our MAT TC package provides uh, uh, un, uh, verification and accurate and unified verification of for TC parameters like track error and intensity are very essential for several purposes like uh, scientific, administrative, and economic purposes. Um, Luckily, Mac TC module uh, provides this unified verification, um, and, uh, and it also provides the consistent stats with operational weather centers, which is very useful for to understand the system better and to understand the modeling uh, or improve the modeling systems. Um, another another feature is that Mac TC is very unique compared to the other Mac TC um, other Mac modules. Like uh, while the other modules um, process the data in GRIP or NetCDF format, the Mac TC modules works with the ASCII format, which is known as ATCF, Automated Tropical Cyclone Forecast Format um, by NHC. So, so this is completely the TC module is entirely different from the other modules uh, in terms of data handling. Um, in a way, TC is also unique in uh, producing the characteristics of uh, TCs, like uh, apart from the track errors and intensity, which is uh, uh, commonly uh, verified, Apart from these two, uh, it also verifies about verification about uh, the rap rapid intensification and weakening errors in the rapid intensification and weakening and chances potential, and as well as the radius of maximum wind errors and metrics. So at NCMRWF, uh, the implementation of MAT package uh, has been done, and then we are using this MAT package tool as a key verification tool compared to uh, for several applications and purposes and uh, in the past couple of days some of my colleagues uh, has presented their results uh, and uh, as far as the MET TC module is concerned at NCMRWF we recently started so in other words I should say that we just uh, started our first steps uh, using the MET TC package for TC, uh, TC verification and we're glad that we are picking up quickly uh, this is all because of the well uh, commenter and uh, user guide um, they are very user friendly. Overall, the documentation and the, the configuration files, the ASCII configuration files are very useful, are very user friendly that uh, the user can um, play with those files without any much difficulty. And we are using uh, the MET 10 version for the TC verification here. So, uh, this is the overview of MET package. Um, uh, overall, uh, overview of MET package and the TC modules are at the bottom. The, both the red and green, uh, red and blue uh, rectangular shaded um, uh, are the TC modules. The red one, red shaded, uh, red color shaded modules, those are TC DLAND and TC pairs and TC STAT, has um, been successfully running at NCM or WF. And the blue shaded ones, the like TC Gen and the rapid uh, 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 radius of maximum wind analysis, uh, this we are still working on it. And glad, uh, sooner or later, we will be completing this task. Okay, so the MAT TC tools that we have used is the TC DLAN, um, the, which is actually, uh, which gives the output of net CDF format, um, which normally gives the nearest distance to the coastline or the island, or you can say the significant land masses. But however, in our present work, we have used the pre-computed files, uh, but we are planning to 
use our own shape files over the North Indian Ocean Basin uh, for the Arabian and Bay of Bengal together. It's the North Indian Ocean Basin. So we want to use our own shape files and uh, uh, work on uh, the TCG land, which is uh, which is on the cards. Uh, then as uh, once the TCG land tool is uh, utilized, then the TC pace um, next goes to the TC pace. TC pace module uh, reads both the uh, um, model forecast and the best track data, which is in ATCA format, which is called A deck and B deck files, and generates an output uh, in the format of .tcst, which is known as Tropical Cyclone Stat format, uh, which contains a matched pace uh, from the both the ATCA files. And finally, those are uh, those those TCST files are um, given as input to the TC stat tool, which is uh, which is a uh, which gives an output of summary stats and plots. Um, the uh, another advantage of this TC stat is that it gives it filters the jobs uh, based on the user defined. Like you can define your own parameter to see the summary stats of the particular parameters. So this is the scripts and process. So what I'm uh, the bottom the bottom right side corner is the tc or uh, match tc package well, uh, overview of the uh, flow diagram uh, here i am saying that this the b deck and a deck file which are in atcf format is uh, passed to tc pairs what we are doing is that before passing this a deck and b deck files to the tc pairs we are uh, doing a small check that is a check atcf we are checking the atcf files for the invest lines um and then we are removing these invest lines uh, and then as soon as these quality control and removed invest lines atcf files from a deck and b deck both they can be uh, they are passing through tc pairs and they will generate the ascii tc stat and so on and so forth and finally the plots are we are using the r script um, the dependency of the r is a 3.6.1 we are using and the finally the tcst the required parameters are plotted so this is our add-on that you check ATCF uh, to remove the invest lines and then rest of the flow diagram follows this as, uh, as given. So uh, this is actually, uh, I, would, uh, I would like to say that we have been, I registered in the GitHub form and um, this is very useful, um, GitHub form. I, I should say that I actually uh, posted some of the issues and discussion section and I would like to acknowledge these uh, gentlemen for, uh, uh, quick, uh, quick, their quick response and uh, appreciate them for um, their uh, inputs and which is helping me to fix some of the issues uh, errors while uh, while playing with the ATCF while running the TC modules. Um, uh, so with the background and the setup, we want to compare the comp performance of uh, different TC modeling systems. Which one is the uh, like I said, one is the NQM global deterministic, which is at 12 kilometer, and the other one is the UKMAT office uh, uh, deterministic. Uh, both are uh, um, uh, both the track forecasts are generated by the Met Office uh, TC tracker, uh, which is uh, based on the 850 Pascal relative vorticity and the mean sea level pressure. So um, interesting data can be the Hemming at 2017. So we are using the GDWC uh, uh, data as a best track data. So here I would like to say that. Uh, prior to this TC uh, verification work, we were using the India Mat Department best track data. But however, we have replaced the data with the JDWC for two reasons. One, uh, the data from the IMD comes uh, in the delay mode. Uh, the other one is that it is confined only to North Indian Ocean Basin, like Arabian and Bay of Bengal together. However, we uh, we want to compare uh, the model performance throughout the globe for all the basins. So we have replaced the uh, IMD data with the JDWC. Uh, However, JDWC data is having some uh, errors on uh, the track data, which is a caveat in the present study. Uh, uh, with this uh, with this limitation, we uh, choose the time period of 2019 to 21 cyclones for all basins, and we we have run those uh, TC modules. Although though I have done for all the all the uh, basins, but however for the demonstrative purpose, I'm just showing over the Arabian Sea. This is the sample screenshot of .tcst format. Like I said, uh, the TC module is uh, it. It has an added advantage to give a unique characteristics like uh, dissecting the track error into its x and y components and along track error, cross track error, along with the uh, maximum win. So this is the, the 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 highlighted portion is showing the different parameters that TCST TCST file gives. 
and these are the preliminary results uh, i'm showing this or the array pnc for the past uh, 2019 to 21 um, this is the the top panel top left panel is the maximum win uh, in terms of the strength of the tc and the other one is the track error uh, both the models showing uh, uh, good performance with lead time the error is increasing and so on and so forth uh, but the additional advantage that, that that in tc we have a we have feature called frequency of super performance um, which is a very good tool I found, and then this is the, it will give you a, with respect to a lead time the model's performance, and the model's performance is ranked with respect to lead time. I have I am not showing that figure here because the sample size is so less, and the figure is uh, uh, the plot is distorted. Um, I would like to add some more cases, uh, maybe different basin, maybe the figure will be different. But however, this this is a useful fsp parameter is very useful to identify the performance of uh, modeling system at different lead times finally after the tc stat uh, once the tc stat input goes to the tc uh, the tc pairs output goes to the tc stat we will get a final summary of the uh, stats that is a text file which gives you a different percentiles and the maximum range um, the upper and lower confidence levels and the interquantile range so on and so forth a lot of uh, uh, stats can be generated from the TC uh, stat module. So Two minutes these, are our, yeah. future, these are our future plans. So uh, like I said, we want to test the TC gen genesis potential over all basins. And like our North Indian Ocean Basin, we want to test the high resolution shape files. And uh, we are doing the radius of maximum winds. And uh, finally, the this whatever I, I showed in the my results is the basin wide stats or the array see Now we want to segregate or dissect into uh, event wise or the cycle wise and finally the we want to repeat the exercise uh, with the ensembles and make use of the tools like uh, probable rapid intensification and rapid weakening um, tools finally i would like to say the organizers for providing me the opportunity uh, thanks uh, thanks and thanks for your attention and i'm ready for the questions thank you Thank you very much, Mohan. That was uh, incredibly interesting. I'm I'm really excited to see the uh, the TC tools being used in this way. I'm glad that your your group has found them to be useful. What questions do we have for Mohan? So I'll ask one. Um, I noticed that you your your graphics that you were displaying at the end there were generated yep. using the plot PCMPR. R script that's included in the MET package. Um, in future versions, we would like to transition this functionality from that R script over to um, to the MetPlotPy uh, Python package. Does that um, does that I'm seem okay to you? Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely okay. Actually, in fact, I was uh, working on Python, so uh, because R, I am new to the R, but I am very, uh, I am a little familiar with the Python. So uh, <laughs> I would like to say that the Python package would be good for me. I mean, it would be very good for me. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, one other thing I've always wondered is, you know, in other parts of the world, so the MetTC package is set up to use the ATCF file format. Um, which is just this customized ASCII file format. I'm wondering, are there other track file formats in use in other parts of the world um, that would be beneficial, for which would be beneficial to add support in MetTC? Yeah, um, I should say yes, because um, this now this whatever the MET package is using only the ATCF files. Uh, that is only one format, even uh, even the MET or uh, but uh, MOTC tracker output we are getting the track forecast. I initially used to convert into ATCF format and then um, pass those uh, files to the modules. But uh, um, if you can, if the MATTC package has that ad advantage of using different format files, it would be uh, beneficial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I wasn't familiar with the uh, MOTC uh, tracker, so that's new to me. Um, yeah. Did someone raise their hand? Let's see. It's me, John. Okay, go ahead, Jai. So the W W W M O tropical cyclone exchange is a use a buffer format. Another one is the XML files. So if you can add those two options. Okay. Yeah, for, uh -oh. not only for ATCF. Great. Uh -oh. I, I do think that would be a relatively I mean 
not simple, but a, a, a logical extension of, of the tools. Okay, in the interest of time, we're going to move on to the next speaker. Um, and the, the third speaker in this session is Bin Bin Zhao from the Environmentally, Environmental Modeling Center at NOAA. He's with IMSG. The title of his talk is Development of MET Plus Ensemble Verification Systems at EMC. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, on the, uh, yes, I can hear you, Bimbit. Okay, yes. Hmm. What's going on? Okay. Can you see my, uh, let me double check. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet? Oh. Can you see that? Oh. Yes, it's starting now. Go oh, slow. Can you see that? Yes. Um, and go ahead and click the, there's a little thing that's uh, with a blue button on the bottom that says stop sharing. And to the right of that, click that the button that says hide. Uh, it's fine right now. Yes, I can see the I can see your your presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, John, and good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Bing Bing Zhou uh, from MSG, uh, working for uh, EMSC of NCEP. So today I'm going uh, going to overview the uh, the progress of a uh, uh, application of uh, Net and Net Plus based uh, sample verification system at, at EMSC. So our general goal is a uh, uh, transition of a current VSDB based ensemble uh, forecast verification system at, at EMC uh, to MED plus based uh, system. So our current system uh, has a grid to grid and grid point uh, verification for both single and uh, ensemble forecast, but it's still uh, unified, uh, uh, not unified and very old and fortune based. So uh, it has been run for uh, a lot of years and still run in operation right now. So we try to build our new unified verification uh, system based on MED and MED Plus and EMC. So under, uh, with uh, MED Plus, uh, so I'll focus on uh, the user case configuration and uh, input data flow and management and uh, output data processing, including the score plotting. So in this way, we can save a lot of uh, resource. We can uh, free from uh, hard work on programming and testing. So we also can uh, use and share some new technology and advance, advances in the MED and the MED Plus. And of course, it's a new system is a standard and unified across all verification uh, paths uh, at the EMC. So uh, before we can use a MED Plus uh, system with some uh, issue, critical issue should be resolved. For example, uh, for global ensemble uh, verification, we are using a climatology distribution beam uh, in our current system. Uh, so to meet this, to meet this requirement, uh, PDC has uh, upgraded uh, the, uh, the, this feature uh, by using climatology mean and the standard deviation. Uh, so that uh, the Climatology distribution can be created to mimic uh, the current climatology beam distribution. So uh, some uh, new uh, important or some important metrics associated with climatology beam are also uh, upgraded. For example, uh, add uh, RPS line type uh, to uh, com uh, to uh, com to compute the RPS and the RPSS. Also add uh, RPSS in essence and the bright scale, uh, bright scale and the bright scale score, and also reliability diagram. Uh, because uh, for, for upper level verification in global ensemble verification, uh, there's no explicit uh, fixed thresholds. So we have to use the uh, person type instead. So uh, in other words, uh, the, the metrics uh, are aggregated over all, uh, all of uh, uh, 
percentile range uh, defined in the configuration file. All of this uh, enhancement has been tested and uh, uh, compared to our current VSDB uh, results. Here is the example of a uh, uh, comparison for uh, for GAF over one mouse uh, for 500 millibar uh, between VSDB and uh, VSDB in blue and uh, MED plus in, in red. And the uh, lower panel is uh, for, CC, uh, for S, uh, APCP 24 hour comparison. We can see that uh, most of uh, uh, scores are very close uh, except for RPSS and uh, price scale score. But this uh, the difference is quite small and the uh, general tendency is uh, similar. So this small uh, difference can be acceptable. Uh, so uh, at EMC, we are focusing uh, on two types of uh, ensemble verification. One is uh, uh, ensemble product verification uh, for main and for main product and uh, property product. These two products are directly from uh, the ensemble forecast output. The second uh, type of the verification is uh, ensemble system verification. Uh, that is to, uh, to verify overall performance of ensemble system uh, such as uh, spread score and rank histogram, rank histogram in our uh, to see how about uh, the ensemble member uh, diver, uh, diverse or how about the member performance in the forecast. Uh, so uh, for the system uh, verification, oh, I'm sorry, uh, for system verification, the ensemble members uh, should be required in, as input in, in the verification. So uh, we have to uh, well uh, manage our data flow uh, for forecast input. Uh, for example, you, you have to uh, reliable ensemble members files and mean and the probability of the files. And also we should prepare the uh, analysis grid, grid files for uh, grid to grid verification and also uh, prepare the observation point, point, uh, file, point file. A session file uh, for uh, uh, grid point verification. And we also prepare, we prepare the computology uh, mean and st standard deviation files. Uh, for regional ensemble, you have to prepare the model sample file, sample computology file. And also, uh, we shall uh, uh, we we'll manage our output state files uh, to see how to, uh, how, how, uh, how to uh, process the file, archive file, and uh, how to generate the plots. Uh, there's not on, there's uh, not an ensemble production verification. Uh, uh, for those uh, uh, products, on the product not exist in the ensemble forecast output, uh, the ensemble, uh, these products can also be uh, produced from ensemble members by MET. Uh, in this case, uh, before uh, before MET uh, 10.0, it can be done by uh, ensemble state. But after uh, 10.1, it's done by new tool called uh, JNS Prod. So in other words, uh, this new tool can separate the production, uh, product generation and the verification uh, so that uh, the burden of the ensemble state can be reduced. So there's two steps. Uh, step one is a uh, product generation and first and the second one, second step is uh, use a grid to grid or grid to state uh, tools to verify uh, uh, required ensemble metrics. Uh, so long, let, uh, long, uh, look, uh, let's look at the ensemble production, uh, product verification for regional ensembles. We uh, at, at ENC we have three ensembles, three are regional ensembles: uh, the high resolution ensemble forecast, uh, short range ensemble forecast, and uh, North America refresh ensemble uh, forecast. This is time lag ensemble. Uh, for uh, HF, uh, in addition to mean the other mean uh, products like uh, probability match mean and uh, local probability match mean. Uh, Technically, uh, we can treat our some product as a single model forecast. Uh, this, uh, in other words, uh, we can directly apply uh, med plus, uh, med, med, med plus point state and grid state tools in the verification. The line types uh, 
uh, for product verification, uh, product verification it depends on uh, the on type for mean and for probability they are different. For mean is, uh, is similar to the single model uh, SL on L2, CTC, CNT, and VL on L2. But for uh, probability uh, is PCT and the PSTD. Uh, this is for probabilistic verification. Uh, for uh, for product for product verification, uh, grid state and uh, point state wrapper uh, should be should be used and uh, uh, well defined in the best class COM5. Besides, uh, in in COM5, besides the wrapper, I will also uh, define uh, define the file path, file name, and uh, verification time and the verification uh, uh, variable, or so on and so forth. So here is a flow chart for regional ensemble mean and uh, mean product mean product verification. Uh, there are three stages. There is three stages. So stage one is the data prepare. The stage two is a uh, run with plus. Stage three is a uh, output uh, data processing and prepare and, and uh, uh, plot generation. In the stage one, uh, we uh, if uh, you uh, if we use uh, CCPA, we should use a uh, uh, PCP combined to uh, accumulate uh, the uh, required uh, precipitation. And uh, for point uh, opposite file, pre, pre buffer file, we, uh, we can use the uh, uh, PC uh, PD to NC uh, to, uh, uh, to convert the, the format from, from the binary files to uh, NC, uh, NetCDA file. And also, uh, we should prepare mean files if, uh, uh, if uh, uh, possible. We should use uh, some uh, toward uh, regrid to make the grid to grid the same grid. Uh, if all uh, data is is, uh, is, uh, is available, then we can uh, uh, use the bed path to run the verification. Uh, the output state file include uh, the line type uh, defined in the, the uh, config files uh, because these are uh, the uh, uh, after running, after running, uh, there are many many state files uh, uh, associated with uh, uh, different forecast hour and different cycles. So these smaller files can be sent to the plotting tools. And in order to well manage uh, or maintain the state file, we can uh, uh, combine uh, the small state file uh, by uh, Metplus uh, state analysis tool to. Uh, aggregate the small file into a large file, so uh, we can archive and manage file and, ma and maintain file in the in the future. So this is for uh, uh, ensemble probability uh, product verification. Uh, this is similar to quite similar to the previous uh, mean verification, uh, except in the difference in the, uh, is in the pro uh, in the probability files and also in in the uh, state uh, state line type file line type, uh, the possible if you uh, if you uh, want to uh, verify the skill score, you have to provide a sample current knowledge, and also difference in the uh, cone file, uh, grid, grid state and point state cone file, uh, as shown by the dash block. Uh, this uh, yeah. The rep is same, but the, uh, but the setting is different for uh, for the uh, mean and uh, probability verification. So let's move on to the ensemble system uh, ensemble system verification. Uh, for this verification, member file should be required as inputs. We have five. Or we have four uh, original uh, ensemble at EMC. Uh, two uh, two global ensemble, and two uh, short range ensemble. Uh, the reference, uh, uh, if you uh, verify uh, skill score, you have to pro uh, provide a reference. For global ensemble, we, we can use uh, NSEP 40 years current knowledge data or WMO yeah, interim current knowledge. And for regional ensemble, we can use a model sample current knowledge or, uh, single, or another single model forecast as reference. Uh, for uh, Ensemble system verification, uh, ensemble state wrapper uh, should be used and uh, defined in the uh, in the uh, uh, Metplus file. 
this uh, should be uh, for both uh, grid grid and grid ops uh, grid point uh, verification. The line type is a uh, is uh, either either isn't or RPS or both. And domain uh, mask file should be also uh, should be uh, defined uh, for global uh, for global uh, scale. Uh, we uh, verify over entire global or north hemisphere and south hemisphere and tropical area. Originally, we uh, verify over corners for east uh, area, central area, west, west area, or class, uh, Alaska area. Uh, here is a general picture uh, of forecast for ensemble products and the system verification. So this is this is a uh, for uh, is for in case of a production generation by uh, product product generation in uh, by uh, plus. So again, as similar as before, uh, the three stage for uh, the for the system relocation is a uh, uh, first stage is a uh, uh, data prepare. The second stage is a uh, uh, run plus, and the third stage is a uh, uh, data out of data processing. So there are two uh, procedures. The first one is uh, uh, is for uh, ensemble system verification uh, uh, run by an ensemble state. <laughs> so after uh, every the, the the second procedure is a uh, product generation run by uh, is run by two steps. Uh, step one is a uh, a new a new tool uh, to generate the ensemble uh, products and then send to. Uh, Step two uh, run by grid state, uh, grid point. Uh, both uh, both uh, procedures all for the state file, but uh, all for the state file, but in different uh, line type. For the system re uh, verification, uh, the line type is the uh, instant or RPS, and for uh, for uh, ensemble product generation, the line type is. Uh, 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 is a CTC uh, SL1L2, SAL12, PSTD, and uh, PDT. Again, this uh, the audible state files and many audible state files can directly send to the plotting tools, or we can put together into a large, large grid, uh, aggregate files uh, according to the MetaPlus state and analysis uh, in some filter condition. To uh to come back, come by together. Two minutes left, David. Okay, thank you. Uh, there uh please note uh, there are two uh, there are notes uh, for uh, setting the probability state and points uh, and point state uh, config files. The left block uh, is uh, is for uh the probability uh, generated from the mid plus. The second. Uh, Case is a uh, uh, probability is from the ensemble forecast. So in these two cases, it's different setting in the confine. So please be careful in the two cases. Another uh, note is for uh, setting the ensemble state. Ensemble state. Uh, uh, one is uh, uh, how to define the capitalized being. If uh, uh, you have uh, both uh, mean and uh, standard deviation, you uh, use uh, eleven. Eleven means uh, ten uh, ten percent interval in the uh, percentile. The second is a uh, for ensemble var, uh, you have uh, besides to you besides you define ensemble var, you also should define the uh, forecast and the observation var. These two var should be same in the in the confine. And, uh, and the third uh, point is uh, you have uh, if you uh, you are reliable if, uh, if you are ensemble files are not reliable, you have to some define some missing threshold. Uh, Zero point nine means uh, yeah ten percent of the number could be uh, could be missing. Then we have a uh, uh, two example of uh, application of MED plus in the EMC official uh, ensemble update ensemble upgrade evaluation. The first one is the uh, HV uh, three version to uh, HV three version application. In the past, it, it, uh, it was done by VSDB, but this time for uh, version three, uh, we use MED plus uh, first time to verify system system and uh, pro uh, and the product verification. The set uh, the the second example is a GAF and the SF comparison and evaluation. Uh, Shaf will retire and be replaced by GAF, so we have to uh, verify uh, GAF before it's retired. Uh, it's done by MedPlus for service field and uh, precipitation, and uh, uh, this uh, verification were uh, already run four years and uh, still run right now. The seasonal scores are 
uh, are routinely generated and displayed in our uh, official verification page. And the daily verification states by uh, archived and available since 2020. Uh, here's the, some uh, example uh, compared uh, between the GAF and the SWIFT. I will skip that. And finally, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this table shows our uh, uh, ensemble verification package in our future EVS plan. And the, this table shows uh, what ensemble forecast uh, sh should be verified and what type, type of system and what field, tools and line type and observation and cryptology and domain and time all is uh, defined in this table. So we just working follow this requirement. Uh, summary, uh, so MetaPlus, Meta, MetaPlus has uh, satisfied all requirements for global and regional ensemble uh, uh, ADMC. So has been fully tested and uh, for both regional and uh, global ensemble uh, scores consistent to VSDB and has been uh, applied to H, uh, uh, HRF3 upgrade and uh, GAF SRF evaluation and uh, a lot is used in the EMC future uh, uh, future plan. Uh, but uh, we are still working there. So we hope that we hope uh, we can complete the prior version of this plan. Okay, thank you for your time and take your question. Thank you very much, Vinvin, for that for that excellent summary. Um, I know we've worked together over the years on. Uh, developing these features and I'm, I'm glad to see that they're um, being put to great use. Is there a, we have time for one question for Binman. Is there one question? Marian, please go ahead. Hi Bin. Um, I was just intrigued by um, the plots you showed with the results differences between your old system and um, MET Plus. And I was just wondering whether you had, um, you know, investigated the the possibility that the masking might be responsible for the differences like we found, um, you know, when we compared our systems. I don't know whether your old system is in Fortran or not, but that could be a distinct possibility. Yes, uh, yes, we, uh, before, uh, we, uh... At the beginning, uh, we find uh, we find uh, some scores uh, is different is very, very is different is very significant significant. So after review the code, uh, we compare code of C plus in C plus in that and our code function. So we found that uh, one uh, one case uh, for RMSC and spread, we found that uh, the looping and the averaging uh, order is different. So after reverse the uh, uh, John, remember this? Uh, yeah, that's reverse, right. <laughs> yeah, we the, found that uh, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The so, order, so the, the, the difference is small. It's, it's, it's gone. Yeah. No, that's good. I mean, that's reassuring. I think we're finding the same things. <laughs> Definitely a lot of lot of details to wade through when comparing systems. Thank you again, Ben Ben, for your talk. That was that was great. Um, our next talk this, this in this session is given by Jai Peng, also from uh, NOAA EMC, and the title of his talk is MetPlus-based Tropical Cyclone Verification Package. Um, this is a 15-minute talk, so I'll give you a warning, Jai, after 11 minutes. Thank you, Joe. So can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, and I see your screen. So I'm going to put a presentation. Okay. Thank you, John, for hosting this session. So, uh, my talk so talk about the EMC uh, tropical cyclone verification package. It's uh, Med Med Plus based. Uh, first, I need thanks to uh, my co-author Oliver and Mary, uh, and also the all the colleagues in this in this here from EMC, we PPGB branch. And of course, DDC friends, and uh, the professor from EIU. Uh, the outline so uh, a brief uh, introduction for TCVP in EMC and the NHC verification. As uh, we use the NHC verification for many years since I joined EMC, okay. 
So from last year, I started using Med, Med Plus based uh, working package for hurricane uh, verifications. So the second one, so we need to convince ourselves, especially also uh, for the NHC focused NHC verification team to make sure the two package match. So that's why we it's important for before we, we use this uh, MedTC. So then we uh, apply this uh, package, MedPlus based uh, T server package for the 2021 hurricane season uh, with the global model and the regional model forecast. So the last part is for talk about the challenge ongoing work. Uh, so in this package, we apply the, uh, please look at the red triangle. So we apply the TCGN application apps, uh, TC pair and the TC stat. So I'm gonna talk about more about the package. So the, okay, Meredith uh, uh, gave a presentation yesterday, described the, uh, he, he's a code manager, uh, maintains the package EMC verify global. So the, the TSA ver verification pack, uh, function is part of in this package, okay? Uh, yeah, here's a, the link and the, the GitHub page. So I'm gonna skip this. Uh, here give you a simple flow chat. So, uh, like how to, uh, how to run, okay, how to run the package that's in the next, next slide, okay. The first one is a master, uh, pre, uh scripted to, is a run underscore verify underscore global dot sh. We call the, uh, I'm gonna use a mouse, okay. So, configure.verify.tc, this is a configure file, especially for Hargan verification. So we have the set up verify global.s, this for to figure out which machine you're running on. So in NOAA, we have the, okay, so yesterday we have a new machine, WCOS2 already in, in nine, okay. So um, we have WCOS1, uh, it's going to retire. And also we have the Loa Jet machine, Hera machine, we have Orin. So different machine. We want to make sure this package can be run on, uh, I mean, different people from different uh, institutes, they can run on different machine. So this will load the machine, uh, figure out the machine and then load the module. So then the run underscore batch pie is for creating the automatic create job car and the summit job. So here's a how to run the, this package. So first I go GitHub, just git clone, just download the package. So the second one is uh, uh, you need to update your configure.verify.tc for your purpose, for different basin, different year, uh, even different stone. Uh, number three is uh, uh, we use a Python to prod all the output from the MedTC. So for the, I'm gonna talk on the number six for the output currently. So number four is just a, a command line to run this package. So for the output, so the TC pair, you know, the first step we run the TC pair to generate the, the output the star dot TCSD. So the second one just TC stat. Then the, just as I said, I, we created our own uh, Python script to plot those output from the MET, MET TC calculations. So number six uh, is a plot. So currently we have the, okay, the first one, okay, the first, first PNG is the absolute intensity. So the, the second one is a long track, and cross track, and a track error. And the, the last one is a um, bias for the intensity. So we can also, if you run for the whole basin, like 2021, say so we have uh, uh, all the storm statistics that's in the bottom for those plots. So the, okay, the NHC 
uh, James Franklin maintained the version 4.11. So uh, this package is a uh, 14 coded. The, the, the good part for this package is this is easy to install, okay? Easy to install, easy to run. So the part of which, uh, as uh, I said before, we use this package for many years. So uh, now we have a new matches based package. We need to compare these two guys to make sure they are uh, up to uh, up to a match. So here's a I just run the um, 2020 uh, storm 29 names ETA. So use the NH's official focus to run with a metaplot based package on the NH's package. So so the the okay the the left lower left they show the okay this is needing hours and the case numbers. So this is the errors for the chart errors. Okay. And then on the uh, bottom right it shows the similar things for the needing hours and the case number. Okay. Except the first uh, uh first line, okay, the black and, and magazine black. So the case number, okay, for the TCVP, we have 46 cases, but for the NHC package, we only have 40, 46. Okay, one is 47, one is 46. So we have one case, missing one case. So we figure out what's going on. So, so the, so the, the NHC, the package, okay, so just yeah, both the MED plus and the NHC packet, we read the same AB deck files. So to do the verification. So there's one happened on the, that's a 20, 20 November A, 18Z. Best check data, but we don't have the official forecast from the initial here, it only shows the 12 hour, okay? This is hour is 12, we're missing the zero. So this is the missing, missing records from the ADEC file, but the trick one is the NHS package is the, it pull out the uh, cargo line for the TOEIC zero and replace the OF cell. So that's why he, 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 this package has more one more cases. So, the, but overall, so I'm sure so we can convince it the NHC stuff and all ourselves and uh, we just say okay the magic say we can trust it so here's a uh, 2021 uh, hurricane I only here show the Atlantic so we can do any basin right any year or multi years or hold on a whole globally okay so the here show the GFS uh, GEFS and the European Center and symbol colliding and the, their symbol and the UK may always symbol. So four global model and their symbols. So, so from this slide, on, I only show the okay with the MTC working package. So here I show you the the top one is a track error. Lower left is a long track arrow, and the lower right is a cross track arrow. So you just look at the okay, the the, the, the black curve is a GFS compared to the like uh, purple for EC and the CMC for blue and UK for oh sorry about that okay CMC for green okay UK for blue okay so look at it. so the GFS did very well in the 2021 hurricane season for Atlantic. So for the intensity, so uh, here the ECMWF, uh, the purple is much better than the GFS for the longer in time for the intensity. So the bottom one shows the bias. So here's a, for the ensemble, okay. Well, for the ensemble, Different symbols. We use the ensemble mean track to verify the uh, the track error or intensity error. Uh, so the okay for the ensemble means so the, the the black curve is for the GEFS. So compared to other global models, so 
So we're lucky in the last year. So the 2021 GFD did very well, did very, very best, okay? So for the intensity, so also the, uh, the, the black curve is for GFS intensity error. So GFS is the best intensity for the for the hurricane 2021 hurricane season. Now I'm going to talk about the TZ genesis. So okay, TZ genesis part is. Uh, uh, so you have two minutes left. Uh, two minutes? Yes. Okay, good. I'll go quick. Okay, so the TZ genesis I list here for the user guide. Okay. So we use this uh, TCG, the, the blue line is the, the command line. So input is AB deck and also the uh, checker data from in the whole hurricane season, May 1st to, to the November 30. So I'll skip how we define what, how to verify. So uh, here's the output from this uh, G, from GFS CMC and ECMWF, they have the same resolution. Uh, generally, they use the same tracker goal, JSU tracker goal. That's why those three guys are very comparable. So look at the, the this this uh, uh, column is for heat cases. The third one is for force alarm. So the general for the three global model, we have a big number of force alarm compared to the heat. So that's a big headache for the forecaster. So for the regional model, uh, so, okay, regional model, we run the, uh, uh, compared with the global GFS as a reference, we run for HWOLF, HMON, and the co DC, and the shield the, uh, okay, for track, so those color curve are for, Hurricane model from Hurricane model, so the track, the uh, global model did uh, better. So, but for the intensity, so of course we count down the Hurricane model or regional model for the intensity forecast. They did very well. So the challenges, okay. Uh, one is uh, just I said the TZ genesis uh, for global model, also for the global ensembles. So how to define the TZ genesis? That's a big uh, issue or problem we need to figure out. Then, then we move forward for the verification. So the second one is, uh, um, so currently the matrix, we cannot uh, like uh, plot the track and spread the scale on the same plot. Uh, I just show you here. So for the, the blue one is for GEFS and symbol mean arrow. And the AESD is uh, the dash pro is for the spread. So also I did the for ECM that we have on the symbols. So this is a missing part we can work on uh, with the DDC colleagues to move over. So then we are in in house uh, as Jason mentioned in the first day, the, we are building the EMC the first version UAS package. So all those functions from the uh tcvp so we're going to put in this package so here's a uh, github so quick summary uh, conclusion so based on the emc verified global this version tcvp was developed to meet the emc tc verification needs so this package also applied to 2021 global and regional verification uh, the last one is the uh, EMC EVS version one will include the TC working function from the package I just mentioned before. Thank you for your time. So ready for question. Thank you very much, Jai. That was a great overview. Um, there, there. I wanted to mention there is in in Met version ten point one. There were several enhancements to the D TC Gen tool. Um, including the ver verification, verifying the genesis probabilities. So I'll put a uh, a link to the 10.1 release notes that you can take a look at. Maybe we can follow up um, afterwards. I would say is there is there there was one question that uh, that Marion posted in the chat. Um, we only have nine minutes left in this session though, so I'd like to move on uh, to the last talk. 
Um, and if you have additional questions, please feel free to post them in the chat and Jai, you can, you can answer them there. Our last speaker this morning is Jeff Hamilton. Um, he is from NOAA GSL and is with Ceres. Uh, he, the, his, the title of his talk is Utilizing MetPlus Neighborhood Verification Techniques in GSL Ensemble Verification. Please take it away, Jeff. Okay. And everyone see my screen? I can see it, Jeff. And Perfect. you're coming through loud and clear. Perfect. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Hamilton, as John said, and I work with uh, Ceres at uh, NOAA's GSL. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about how we are working to incorporate some of the neighborhood methods available in MetPlus into the GSL Ensemble Verification System, uh, as well as some tools that are used by our model developers for evaluation and assessment. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge and thank my colleagues at GSL as uh, our entire verification would uh, not be possible without the entire team. Uh, this is a, a basic overview of my talk. Uh, we're gonna go over the motivation behind developing the system in the first place. Uh, we'll touch on the initial ingest that we set up around four years ago, along with uh, its uh, limitations right off the start. Um, and this will lead us into talking about the new neighborhood methods uh, that we've been working on. Uh, incorporating over the past year or so. And uh, finally, we'll touch on the web interface that our modelers used for assessment plotting and some future work still to come. So our model verification development at GSL has followed these motivations for some time, and uh, it really was no different when we began developing an ensemble system. Uh, our modelers need a verification suite that will provide judgments based on objective tests for real-time uh, experimental and retrospective cases, and that system needs to be reliable on a day-to-day -day basis and flexible enough to add new techniques and data sources in a timely manner. And it also really needs to be responsive to modeler requests. We really work on you know, answering modeler needs in a very quick turnaround time, and uh, we wanted to have that here as well. So this leads us to uh, 2018, when we first developed our uh, prototype ensemble verification system. Uh, we have been developing our internal deterministic system for probably about a decade at this point, so we wanted to avoid starting from scratch all over again. And plus, we really wanted to stand something up pretty quickly, as at the time we were working on the uh, HER ensemble. Uh, fortunately, our colleagues at the DTC had been hard at work on components of MetPlus for a long time, and we decided to utilize their package, uh, specifically the GridStat and Ensemble Stat utilities. Uh, initially, uh, these utilities were managed by some in-house wrappers that we built uh, at GSL. But in uh, 2019, uh, we worked with DTC to transition to the new, uh, at least at the time, MET plus Python wrappers. Currently, uh, we use the wrappers as well as the data form uh, reformatting tools, PCP, Combine, and Regrid Data Plane, the uh, statistic tools that I mentioned, Grid and Ensemble Stat, and uh, MetDataDB and MetExpress for database and web interface applications that I'll touch on later. Now, uh, MetPlus is uh, much more than just a Python wrappers, as we all know. Um, as you can see in this flowchart, they were uh, GSL's first step into incorporating and even contributing pieces to the MetPlus package. And uh, the wrappers were really advantageous to us because they provided a community supported method for building an ensemble verification system that satisfied, that satisfied all of the requirements uh, to our model developers that I mentioned before. They helped to automate configuration setup as well as uh, manage the MET utility configurations in a repeatable way. Uh, this was advantageous to us since we required a quasi operational system that would not need developer handholding at every turn. Um, especially as more and more ensemble systems were brought online. Uh, perhaps most importantly, moving to MetPlus allowed GSL to experiment with uh, probabilistic product generation inside of ensemble stat, which is really a critical need for developers' evaluations, especially when trying to compare uh, model output and ensemble output with observations. So this is a, a very simplistic uh, representation of our workflow, and we built it around the MetPlus package that and it currently runs on the JET High Performance Computing System in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, in order to efficiently manage job submission on the system, we designed a Rakoto workflow to handle various tasks. 
the MetPlus wrappers undertake, including file preprocessing, MetPlus configuration setup, uh, and lastly, database loading. The XML files uh, set file and time dependencies for each of these tasks, which creates an automated system that only runs when data is available. And once output exists, uh, MetDataDB loads that output into a MySQL database where metadata is generated for use in the MetExpress interface. So though we, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel when we were standing up our ensemble capabilities, uh, there were still some limitations in ensemble stat back in 2019. Uh, the ensemble relative frequencies that are calculated at individual grid points across all of the ensemble members uh, don't really account for spatial variance. And this led to ensemble systems uh, and particularly higher resolution uh, convective allowing models uh, to be unfairly penalized when looking at distinct features like reflectivity and precipitation. And this was due to an assumption that a perfect forecast needed to match at the native scale of the model and observations themselves. And historically, we've attempted to get around this problem in our deterministic evaluation with some various methods, including what you may be able to call neighborhood approaches. And these, this had mixed success over the years. Um, but with these lessons learned, we wanted to have uh, codified methodologies in place for our ensemble system due to the added complexity of dealing with probabilistic output. So Schwartz and Sobash wrote a paper for Monthly Weather Review back in 2017 that uh, clearly spelled out two distinct but useful methods for applying neighborhood techniques to ensemble systems and verification. <coughs> Excuse me. Using their terminology, these methods are the, the neighborhood ensemble probability and the neighborhood maximum ensemble probability. And GSL worked with DTC to help test and implement these methods. And they were officially added to ensemble stat back in 2020. So now we're gonna, we'll go through both of the methods in a little more detail and talk about how we, we currently use them. Uh, neighborhood ensemble probabilities are the simpler of the two to calculate. And essentially a, a neighborhood scale is specified in the ensemble stack configuration file. It can be either a box or a circular shape. And all of the grid points are tested against a user-defined threshold for a particular event. The binary values of occurrence are then averaged over the entire neighborhood to provide a neighborhood probability for that ensemble member's grid point. The same calculations can be used to provide a neighborhood uh, event frequency for gridded observations as well. Uh, the process is repeated for all ensemble members, then averaged together across the entire system to finally give us the, the neighborhood ensemble probability at that grid point for the entire thing. This method is, is useful for low range or for low threshold large scale events, but it quickly loses sharpness as the threshold magnitude increases and event scale decreases. You can easily see this behavior in the example probabilistic composite reflectivity plots. Uh, these are from the experimental Rufus ensemble. The higher 40 dBZ threshold on the top leads to massive reduced, massively reduced probabilities in the top graphic compared to the 20 dBZ uh, map below. So it, in our initial attempts uh, with neighborhood methods, uh, we were mostly concerned with high impact events. So this kind of depression of probabilities with the, the NEP was, was not necessarily a good thing for us. So therefore, the neighborhood maximum, self, uh, maximum ensemble probability method uh, has been our priority so far. Um, while the NEP could be considered essentially smoothing through averaging, the, the NMEP is a searching algorithm. It checks to see if the event occurred once within the neighborhood of one ensemble member and then averages that across the, the ensemble as before. Um, this method leads to discrete objects with very high spatial gradients. So typically a, a Gaussian filter is used to smooth the results, but it's not necessarily required. Uh, as you can see, the resulting probabilities look far better for our higher threshold of 40 dBZ reflectivity than the previous results on the uh, slide before. However, a byproduct of this is that, especially in regards to uh, the Gaussian filter, is that probabilities can become overconfident. And this has been true at all thresholds. So over the past year, uh, GSL has been working on the best way to incorporate these new capabilities uh, from Ensemblestat into our real-time system. Uh, and the methods 
enhance the system's value to model, model or developers, but they also add a lot more complexity and computational requirements to our workflow. Uh, creating these probabilities, uh, these neighborhood probabilities for the ensemble systems and event frequency in the observations is uh, computationally expensive. And it really takes too long when trying to run multiple neighborhood and Gaussian kernel scales in one task. So to get around this, we, we implemented meta tasks in our Rakoto workflow configuration in order to implement what, I mean, you, you could basically call this a, a crude parallelization of the processing uh, on our HPC system. So this is successful, but also has been risky as well as the, the workflow is much more complex. As I say, it's a, it's a machine of many small parts. So it's definitely not as stable as we would like it to be at this point. Um, additionally, with the, with the new methods come additional variables to include in the verification statistics, and this has required an update in the database uh, metadata generation to recognize the variables and metrics being created, and that work is, is still ongoing at this point. So as we uh, continue to move through the, the full stack of the flowchart, um, once stats are generated by ensemble stat and grid stat, they are ingested into a MySQL database uh, by MetDataDB. Um, this database has a schema that follows the organization of Met output as closely as possible and is consistent across all the databases created in the uh, MySQL instance. Once their metadata is generated to summarize the variables, metrics, regions, or anything else that the web interface uh, needs to function, and I should note that uh, this metadata generation is separate from the actual Rakota workflow uh, presently, uh, but we hope to incorporate some aspects of it in our real-time uh, system in the future, uh, mainly to lessen the burden of the, uh, the full database scan. So the crucial piece for, uh, for model developers is the web interface. And at GSL, we've been using uh, what we call the Model Assessment Tool Suite, or MATS, to evaluate our legacy deterministic verifi verification system since 2015. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, a, a joint effort between DTC and GSL created the new interface called MetExpress. Um, this, this effort was designed to supplant the MetViewer uh, interface with a MATS-like interface for lighter weight vi visualization. So we, we take advantage of the scope of the Met statistics without the learning curve of the powerful but complex uh, map viewer interface. Two minutes so remaining. Okay, this provided the, uh, the opportunity to combine efforts and eventually led to the development of the uh, ensemble application itself. Um, this app has no equivalent in the MAT system. It's purely in MetExpress, uh, but it still retains the same look and feel uh, GSL model developers are accustomed to. So ensemble, and probabilistic statistics and graphics are available for a variety of variables, all driven by what is included in the MetPlus output. Uh, as you might expect, this app has uh, properties specific to ensemble verification, like I mentioned yesterday. Uh, this includes metrics, plot types, and variables that are not included in any other MetExpress app. Uh, metadata drives possible selections that uh, users can choose from. And then the database is queried for that desired statistic and plot type and results typically are returned very quickly. Um, ease of use and intuitive data selectors that were the primary focus, uh, similar to when we were designing mats. And we really just wanna make things as simple as possible for uh, users to evaluate and assess uh, their model skill. So obviously uh, ensemble verification is a, a very large subject and uh, there's plenty of work left to be done on our side, uh, both on engineering and scientific uh, issues that we're encountering. Uh, MetPlus recently split the ensemble post-processing and verification aspects of ensemble stat into two utilities. So we're planning on overhauling our entire system in the coming months in order to separate the probabilistic product generation from the statistical generation. And uh, hopefully that'll also save on computation time as well. Uh, there are plans to add some parallelization to MET utilities at some point, and we uh, look to take advantage of that uh, once it becomes available. We'll continue to enhance our metadata, as I mentioned, in order to make full use of the new neighborhood methods, including adding selectors for uh, variable thresholds, neighborhood length scales, and Gaussian filter options, um, as opposed to having them just all in the variable name right now, which can be a little bit confusing uh, for users unfamiliar. Um, we're very excited to add some percentile thresholding, especially uh, in regards to precipitation verification, and are planning to add uh, plotting capabilities to MetExpress uh, where time and, uh, and needs uh, allow for. 
So uh, wrapping things up, I have the, the full reference to the Schwartz and Sobash paper that I mentioned before for all interested, uh, along with a link to uh, GSL's Mats and MedExpress uh, applications if anyone, wants to, if anyone wants to play around with some of the stats. Uh, wanted to give a special shout out to the entire MetPlus development team for all of their hard work um, supporting the, the general verification community on this effort specifically, as it would not have been possible without them. And uh, that's all that I've got. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeff, for that excellent overview. I appreciate it. Um, let's thank all of our speakers from this session. Um, actually, let me let me stop and say, is there, are there any questions for Jeff? I, I realize that we're seven minutes into our break, and I apologize for that, but I do want to give uh, see if there's any questions for Jeff before we adjourn. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Jai, Bin Bin, Mohan, and Anuma, Anumea. I appreciate all your talks this morning. Um, Tara, I will hand it back to you. Uh, are there any instructions before we break? Uh, yeah, why don't we um, extend our break just a little bit and come back at um, 20 minutes after the hour rather than 15 minutes after the hour, so give people a little bit of break. So that'll be 10.20 Mountain Time, 12.20 um, p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and uh, I'll just kind of shorten my intro to the, um, the breakout groups. Um, to accommodate. So see everybody back here at 20 minutes after the hour. <laughs>